It's hard to believe that it's been over 20 years since the invasion angle ended. One of the biggest missed opportunities in wrestling history culminated at Survivor Series 2001, a pay-per-view that saw several title unification matches, an immunity battle royal, and an epic winner-takes-all 10-man elimination tag match with the fate of sports entertainment hanging in the balance. There were three whole companies worth of talent on the show. Some were massive superstars, some were on their way to getting there, and others never would. But just what exactly happened to everyone from WWE, WCW, and ECW that took part in Survivor Series 2001? Mason Ryan, Stevie Ray, Earthquake, Alundra, Blaze, Norman Smiley, Zach Gowan, Bam Bam Bigelow. Ahmed Johnson, Tory Wilson, Buff, Bagwell, Robert Gibson, Dave Taylor, Terry Taylor, and Godfather's Homes. Wayne Gill, Adam Bomb, Michael Hayes, Cor, Von, S.A. Rios, Jim Manai, the manager from Kai and Ty, Jim Powers, Francine, Jack Swagger, Mean Gene, Fatchick Thriller, Duke the Dumpster, Oklahoma Manta. What happened to that wrestler? Some were main eventing, which leaves me lamenting. What happened to that wrestler? Some since long forgotten, but their memories live on. Jim Ross. After working for WWE as an executive vice president of talent relations and lead commentator for around 25 years off and on, good old JR formally left the company in March 2019. In truth, he'd been a peripheral figure for a while and was clearly being phased out. But WWE's loss was AEW's gain, however, as Ross now acts as the lead announcer for Tony Khan's promotion. He also co-hosts the Grilling JR podcast with Conrad Thompson and has his own line of barbecue sauce. Paul Heyman Paul Heyman left WWE in 2006 and returned in 2012 to act once more as the mouthpiece of Brock Lesnar. In the decades since, he's been the advocate for many so-called Paul Heyman guys and has worked backstage in various roles, including as the head writer of Raw for a brief period. These days, he is singing the praises of Roman Reigns. The man knows a gravy train when he sees one. Oh, wait. Wait, no. Bollocks. Howard Finkel. The Fink was inducted into the WWE Hall of Fame in 2009 and was brought in to ring announce on a special occasions basis thereafter. In the later years of his life, he popped up here and there while continuing to work backstage for the company. He sadly passed away in April 2020 at the age of 69. Christian. Representing the Alliance, that turncoat Christian was the first wrestler out on the night, defending his European title. Captain Charisma left WWE for TNA in came back again before persistent concussion issues forced his retirement in 2014. Incredibly, he was cleared to return to the ring in 2021 and was a surprise participant in the Royal Rumble match. Curiously, he and WWE didn't reach an agreement for a new contract and Christian instead signed with AEW. He is still very, very good at professional wrestling. Al Snow Al Snow was the man trying to wrest the European title away from Christian to no avail. Al's done a little bit of everything and shown up in a bunch of different companies in the two decades since this show. Nowadays, he's the main man at Ohio Valley Wrestling, where he's a minority owner. He's also the co-founder of the Collar and Elbow clothing brand and dusts head off to do the Weekend Warrior thing every once in a while. Stephanie McMahon After the first match, we had a backstage segment featuring Stephanie and Shane McMahon talking to members of Team Alliance. Steph is, obviously, still a major part of WWE, currently holding the title of Chief Brand Officer. She hasn't wrestled or been a consistent television character for a while, but look out for the debut of her and Triple H's oldest daughter, who is already in training. Shane McMahon Shane isn't involved in the day-to-day -day running of WWE like his sister, instead focusing his efforts on his many outside ventures. It was those outside ventures and lack of interest in WWE's backstage scene that convinced Shane to leave the company in 2009, though he returned in 2016 and worked as a wrestler, producer, and on-screen authority figure. He is also the best wrestler in the world. Rob Van Dam One of the big success stories of the Invasion storyline was the rise of Rob Van Dam. RVD has been back and forth between WWE, Impact, and the Indian international scenes over the years, and has outside interests and businesses such as his RVD CBD brand. He was inducted into the WWE Hall of Fame in 2021, and later that year married 
long-term girlfriend, Katie Forbes. He seems happy. Steve Austin. De facto leader of the Alliance, Steve Austin had a cracking 2001, coming back after major neck surgery to do some of the best work of his career, despite the ill-advised heel turn. Austin hung up his leather vest at WrestleMania 19 in 2003 and hasn't wrestled since, though he has continued to show up in WWE, usually to cut a promo or act as a special guest referee or something. Made a Hall of Famer in 2009, these days the Texas Rattlesnake's main contribution is as the host of the Broken Skull Sessions podcast on the WWE. WWE Network. He also has his own beer, Broken Skull IPA, because of course he does. Debra. Austin's now ex-wife, Debra, was by his side. She left WWE when Austin decided to walk out of the company in June of 2002, which wasn't long before their marriage completely fell apart. Debra basically left the business after, but can still be found at conventions and autograph signings and the like. Kurt Angle. Another no good turncoat was Kurt Angle, though he would come good by the end of the night. One of the best wrestlers ever, the Olympic hero continued to wrestle for WWE, TNA, and then WWE again before retiring at WrestleMania 35 in 2019, having been made a WWE Hall of Famer two years prior. Kurt is no longer with WWE, instead choosing to refuse their offers in favor of his other business interests. He also co-hosts the Kurt Angle Show podcast with Conrad Thompson. Booker T. The former five-time WCW champion is another who went from WWE to TNA and back again. Since retiring from in-ring action, Booker has worked primarily as a commentator and analyst on WWE TV and has his own podcast, The Hall of Fame. Which is apt, since he's been inducted into WWE's twice, first as a single star and then for his Harlem Heat tag team with brother Stevie Ray. Booker still runs the reality of wrestling promotion and training school that he opened in 2005. Vince McMahon After the Team Alliance pep talk, the camera cut to Vince McMahon and wife Linda. Vince is still the man as far as WWE is concerned, so not much has changed there in 20 years. He will always be the man, even if he has to run the company as a head in a jar. You laugh, but seriously, I wouldn't put it past him. Linda McMahon The former CEO of WWE is currently the chair of the board at the America First Policy Institute and does lots of work to help small businesses. Michael Cole Who's that skinny lad with the goatee sticking a microphone in the McMahon's faces? Well, it's Michael Cole. Not long after this, Cole became the lead announcer for SmackDown and never looked back. One of WWE's longest serving on-screen performers by a long way, Cole was the lead announcer for Raw for a while, but is now back doing his thing on the blue brand. William Regal. Gate crashing the McMahon's interview prior to his match with Tajiri was the Alliance's William Regal. Regal retired in 2013 and has since been heavily involved with WWE WWE's developmental system, working as a scout, trainer, and the on-screen general manager of NXT. His son Bailey currently wrestles on the NXT UK brand under the name Charlie Dempsey. Tajiri Representing WWE against our Regal, the Japanese buzzsaw was a great addition to the roster and had a few really solid years in the company before deciding to depart in 2005. Since then, he has predominantly plied his trade in his homeland, but did make it back to WWE for a brief comeback in 2016. Tori Wilson. Running out after Tajiri got pasted was his on-screen girlfriend slash manager Tori Wilson, who got hit with a William Regal Tiger Bomb for her concern. Tori left WWE in 2009 and was inducted into the Hall of Fame in 2019. Nowadays, Wilson runs her own fitness company and won't bloody stop sending me DMs. Look, I'm flattered, Tori, but no means no. No, I'm just kidding. She's married and I'd have no chance. But it's fun to pretend, isn't it? Test. We cut backstage to see Intercontinental Champion and test, a real thing that happened for a couple of weeks, flexing in front of a mirror while a woman covers his body in oil. It was hot. A talent with most of the things that WWE looks for in a main event player, namely those big shiny muscles, but it never quite happened for him across two stints in the company. Sadly, Andrew Martin passed away in March 2009, just four days before his 34th birthday. Stacy Keebler. Stopping by to do some flirting with her then real life squeeze was Stacy Keebler. She left WWE and the business in 2006 to pursue acting and modeling. She's now married to some lucky bastard and has three kids. Stacy returned to WWE for the first time in ages to induct best friend Tori Wilson into the Hall of Fame in 2019. Jonathan Coachman. 
Jonathan Coachman is here, interviewing Edge before his United States slash Intercontinental title unification match. The coach left WWE in 2008, spent almost a decade working for ESPN before returning as a commentator, pre-show host, and panelist. He's no longer with WWE and has gone back to commentating golf for the NBC Sports Group. In early 2021, he claimed that he would never return to Vince McMahon's company. That's what they all say, Jonathan. Edge. Speaking of people we never thought we would see back, how about that Edge comeback, eh? The rated R superstar was forced to retire due to injuries in 2011 and took to acting while also starting a family with former WWE superstar and fellow Hall of Famer Beth Phoenix. Amazingly, Edge was cleared to return in 2020 and has been back on a part-time basis since. His work is typically excellent. Lita. After Edge beat Test and unified the US and Intercontinental titles, we cut backstage for more drama, first with Stephanie and Kurt Angle, and then Team Extreme. Lita, who competed in the six-way match to determine a new women's champion later in the night, left WWE in 2006 and has shown up here and there for the odd match as a coach in Season 5 of Tough Enough and to be inducted into the Hall of Fame in 2014. She's active on Twitch and does conventions and autograph signings. Jeff Hardy Jeff Hardy never thought that he would be back in WWE after leaving in 2009 due to personal issues, particularly his battle with substance abuse. Thankfully, the charismatic Enigma was able to clean himself up and return along with brother Matt in 2017. A surefire future Hall of Famer, Jeff was doing his thing again in WWE until being released following a reported incident at a live event. Matt Hardy Like Jeff, Matt has had his issues but also managed to get himself together and make a positive contribution to the industry. One of the early practitioners of so-called cinematic wrestling, Matt completely reinvented himself thanks to the balmy broken universe which eventually made its way to WWE. Matt left WWE in 2020, however, and now performs for AEW. Outside of the ring, he is married and has, at last count, four children. Trish Stratus After their little powwow, Lita bumped into Trish. Trish Stratus, another of the women scheduled for the six-way women's title match later. Trish retired from full-time in-ring competition just a couple of months before Lita did in 2006 and beat her bestie to the Hall of Fame by a year. Like Lita, she's also been back for the occasional match and to work on the revamped Tough Enough. Now a mum of three, Stratus is involved in the yoga and fitness worlds and is also set to be a judge on Canada's Got Talent in 2022. Bubba Ray Dudley The next match was the Hardys taking on the Dudleys in a cage match to use unify the WCW and WWE tag team titles. Both Bubba and Devon were inducted into the WWE Hall of Fame in 2018 after they had come back for a decent little nostalgia run over a decade after originally leaving the company. These days, Bubba runs and is the head trainer at the Team 3D Academy and co-hosts the Busted Open radio show on Sirius XM. Devon Dudley Devon is now retired from in-ring action and working as a backstage producer for WWE. He also has a training school School, the Devon Academy in Florida, and hosts a podcast called Table Talk. Mick Foley After the Dudleys had won their match, we cut to WWF New York, the company's money sinkhole restaurant that was located in the heart of Times Square. Foley, who was playing WWE commissioner here, was a day away from leaving the company, having grown dissatisfied with its creative direction. He would be back numerous times for short runs or one-off matches in the years that followed, before retiring properly and being inducted into the Hall of Fame in 2013. These days, he does a little bit of everything, from acting and activism to writing, stand-up comedy, autograph signings, and fundraising. He's a good one, is Mick. Scotty Too Hottie. Up next, we have the Immunity Battle Royal, which would give whoever won it immunity from being fired for a year, regardless of who won the winner-takes-all main event. Scotty Too Hottie was supposed to be a participant, but was attacked by eventual winner Test backstage and never made it to the ring. Scotty was recently a coach and a beloved one by all accounts at the WWE Performance Center before requesting his release in November 2021. Lance Storm Lance Storm didn't win the match, but he did stick around WWE for another two and a half years or so. After entering semi-retirement, Storm opened up his Storm Wrestling Academy school and crafted a reputation as one of the best trainers in the business. These days, he's currently offering
online virtual coaching and match breakdown. If I can be serious for a minute, I would suggest that everyone listens to the advice of Citizen Storm. Just Incredible Former ECW champion Just Incredible is one of the many ex-stars who have been through some bad times when it comes to substance abuse issues. He recently wrote a book and accepts bookings for all things wrestling. P.S. I'm not sure if you noticed this or not, but if you say his name really fast, it sounds like Just Incredible. <laughs> Wow. Sean Stasiak Sean Stasiak's big contribution to the invasion was being the guy who was routinely and very quickly pasted in humorous ways. No surprise then that he was chucked out of the Battle Royal in the first second of the match. Stasiak has been retired for a while now and works as a chiropractor and motivational speaker. Raven Now semi-retired after a long and varied career, Raven hosts a podcast called The Raven Effect. He's probably planning his next attack on Tommy Dreamer as we speak. Diamond Dallas Page One of wrestling's big success stories, DDP found stardom later than most and has continued to make a positive impact on the business directly and indirectly since. Page is not just the creator of DDP Yoga, but has also helped turn around the lives of people like Scott Hall and Jake Roberts. He was inducted into the WWE Hall of Fame in 2017. Stevie Richards Like Dallas, Stevie Richards is another former star who has dedicated his post-wrestling life to fitness, developing his own specialized program and line of products. He also does the convention and autograph signing thing and still occasionally wrestles. Tommy Dreamer Tommy Dreamer is, was, and always will be involved in professional wrestling in some way, shape, or form. Just accept it. Even if people try to cancel him for having an offensive haircut, but really for saying dumb stuff on a TV show. Dreamer still wrestles, books, and promotes shows, does the podcast thing, and can be found at conventions and signings. Billy Kidman Kidman retired in 2007, but has been an influential figure behind the scenes since and is still with the company to this day. He's worked as a trainer, backstage producer, and timekeeper. Sadly for him, he's no longer married to Tori Wilson. She's with me now in my head. Chavo Guerrero Chavo left WWE in 2011, ending a 10-year run with the company, and is one of the few who hasn't been back in any capacity. He's since worked for TNA, Lucha Underground, and even showed up in AEW in 2021. His main gig these days is in television, where he's worked on such shows as Glow and Young Rock. Hugh Morris There's nothing funny about Hugh Morris, just like there's nothing funny about the allegations of bullying and abuse that plagued Bill DeMott after he transitioned into a trainer for WWE's developmental territories. He's no longer in that system, though he seems to be a reformed character these days. Demott works as a motivational speaker and makes appearances at conventions and signings. The Hurricane The Hurricane sadly no longer dons his green cape, with Shane Helms having retired in 2019. He had a damn good career, though, and continues to play his part in the business as a backstage producer for WWE. Bradshaw It's amazing to think that within just a few short years, Bradshaw went from a warm body in a battle royal to having one of the longest WWE title runs ever. The tall Texan retired for good in 2009 and has since shown up in WWE as a commentator and pre-show panelist. He currently does a lot of charity work with at-risk inner-city kids. He also co-hosts a podcast with Gerald Briscoe. JBL was in inducted into the WWE Hall of Fame in 2021. Ron Simmons Bradshaw's drinking buddy basically retired from wrestling in 2004, but he's not been a stranger on WWE TV since. He will show up when a punchline is needed, saying his catchphrase. What was that again? It was a particular word, I think. Damn, I can't remember it. Oh well. Anyway, the former WCW Heavyweight Champion was inducted into the WWE Hall of Fame in 2012. Crash Holly An unsung hero of the Attitude Era and someone who always entertained as the Houdini of hardcore, Crash sadly passed away in 2003. He was just 32 years old. Funaki Good old Funaki, another often overlooked servant of the era. He's still working with WWE today as one half of the Japanese announce team and as an interpreter for Japanese. Japanese talent. He also runs the Funaki Dojo Training School in San Antonio, Texas. Indeed. Perry Saturn Not long after leaving WWE in 2002, Perry Saturn just about fell off the face of the earth. It transpired when he resurfaced years later that he had been in the throes of a serious drug addiction which had left him homeless. He's doing better these days, but is struggling with various debilitating health issues related to both his career and past demons. Billy Gunn Billy Gunn became a member of the WWE Hall of Fame with Degeneration X in 2019, not long after he and Road Dogg had returned for what once seemed like 
like an improbable nostalgia run. Even though he's pushing 60 nowadays, you wouldn't know it. The man is jacked to all hell and working for AEW as a coach and wrestler alongside his sons Colton and Austin in the gun club. Chuck Palumbo The Chuck to guns Billy, Palumbo retired in 2012. In the years since, he's had a couple of businesses, including CP Customs, which build custom motorcycles, and a CrossFit gym. He also plays in a rock band and has a YouTube channel called Chuck of All Trades, which features the former tag champ showing off all of his manly pursuits, like hammering drywall. Spike Dudley Spike left WWE in 2005, did the TNA and indie thing for a while, and then sacked the business off altogether, opting to get a quote-unquote proper job. He now works as a financial transition specialist for Merrill Edge and is married with kids. I bet he really misses getting lobbed through flaming tables by blokes four times his size, you know? Albert Prince Albert, Albert, the hip-hop hippo, A-Train, Giant Bernard, Lord Tensai, Tensai, Sweet Tea, call him what you want, but his his real name is actually Matt Bloom, and today he is one of the main men at the WWE Performance Center where he acts as head coach. Which is apt, because he's bloody massive, isn't he? Taz. And rounding out the immunity battle royal field was Taz, whose WWE career quickly fizzled out despite a bright start. Taz swapped the squared circle for a headset and a seat next to Michael Cole when he became a color commentator soon after retiring due to injuries. It's a role he still does today for AEW, where he's also the manager of the Team Taz faction, including his son Hook. Jacqueline. Now time for the rest of the women vying to become the new women's champion, months after the then reigning champion China had left the company. The tough as nails Jacqueline was released in 2004, spent some years working for TNA, and then quietly retired. She can still be seen at conventions and signings. In 2016, the former women's champion made history when she became the first African American female inducted into the WWE Hall of Fame. She also made a surprise appearance in the first ever Women's Royal Rumble match in 2018. Ivory Add Ivory to the list of Hall of Famers. She was inducted in 2018. Later that year, she was involved in the Battle Royal on the all-female Evolution pay-per-view. Ivory currently owns and operates a pet grooming business called Lisa's Place Pet Care. Mighty Molly And another! The perennially underrated Molly Holly was inducted into the WWE Hall of Fame in 2021. Before that, she had made special appearances in a couple of Rumbles and at Evolution. Molly now works as a backstage producer. Jazz Though not in the Hall of Fame yet, Jazz, who was making her WWE debut in this match, has left one hell of a legacy in the business. Closing in on retirement, Jazz runs the Dog Pound Wrestling School with husband and fellow former WWE star Rodney Mack. Big Show And so once Trish Stratus had won her first women's championship, it was time for the main event, the winner-takes-all 10-man elimination tag match. Many had Big Show pegged as a WWE lifer, but having seen and done it all over 20 years, he decided decided to leave the company in 2020 and sign for AEW instead. He also does acting and now has a six pack, so that's terrifying. Kane. The Big Red Machine really was big and red at Survivor Series 2001, donning a one-time only Scarlet Ensemble for the occasion. Though not officially retired, Kane had been winding down his wrestling career since 2016 in order to focus on his political career and now only shows up once in a blue moon. The current mayor of Knox County, Tennessee was inducted into the WWE Hall of Fame in 2021. The Undertaker What more is there to say at this point? The Undertaker finally retired after 30 years years at Survivor Series 2020, having had his last match with AJ Styles at WrestleMania 36. A true legend of the industry, the dead man's place in it is assured, and he will have a job with WWE for life. Chris Jericho Look at Chris Jericho, a month before beating The Rock and Steve Austin in the same night to become the first ever undisputed champion. Who would have called that one, eh? Y2J is one of the GOATs, noted for his accomplishments as much as his impressive longevity and penchant for reinventing himself. Jericho now flies the AEW flag and was the first ever AEW champion. He's also an author, podcast host, cruise operator, butcher, baker, candlestick maker, among many other things. 
The Rock. It was clear even at the time that the man who won the invasion for Team WWE at Survivor Series 2001 wasn't long for the wrestling world. He already had one foot in Hollywood, and before long he would be all in on his acting career. It paid off, and then some. The most electrifying man in all of entertainment is the biggest movie star in the world and is practically an industry unto himself. He's been back in the ring since taking off for Tinseltown, of course, last wrestling a proper match against John Cena at WrestleMania 29. Will he be back? Well, I personally think that he- IT DOESN'T MATTER WHAT I THINK! Oh, never gets old, does it? And neither does The Rock, does he? Just look at him. A beautiful specimen. A hero. A role model. Oh, how I wish I was in him. Sorry, I mean I wish I was kiss him. Sorry, I mean, sod it. You know I love you, Dwayne.